Google Finance 5. Understanding Stock Buybacks. Stock buybacks have totaled over $5 trillion since 1983. They have become the major force affecting stock prices and investors' retirement plans. Yet, most investors are not aware of the importance of buybacks. First, let's define stock buybacks. Stock buybacks are the repurchase by a company of its own stock. Since 1982, stock buybacks have been the major force driving stock prices in the United States capital market. In current dollars, stock buybacks have totaled more than $5 trillion. Why are stock buybacks important? Well, one reason is that they affect stock prices. Next, by spending company cash, stock buybacks reduce the ability of a company to pay dividends. Similarly, they reduce the reserves that a company has for hard times or new opportunities. Due to loopholes in accounting standards, buybacks cause profits to be greatly overstated. Finally, stock buybacks are an unfair distribution of assets that rightly belong to all shareholders. Why do buybacks affect stock prices? By taking stock off the market, buybacks reduce the availability of the stocks of a particular company. Stock buybacks often involve very large quantities of stocks, sometimes 20% or more of securities in circulation are bought back. Furthermore, stock buybacks are done with the intent of raising stock prices. They are a type of stock price manipulation that would otherwise be illegal if not given safe harbor from criminal prosecution by the Securities and Exchange Commission in 1982. How do stock buybacks reduce dividends? Companies use cash reserves that otherwise would be available to pay dividends in order to finance stock buybacks. Companies often falsely claim that stock buybacks are the equivalent of dividends. This is not true because dividends are paid proportionately to all shareholders. Buybacks distribute company assets to only some shareholders. In doing so, stock buybacks deplete a company's cash reserves and its ability to pay future dividends. How do buybacks weaken a company? Stock buybacks reduce reserves that would otherwise be available for times of financial stress. They also use funds that might otherwise be available for research and development, reducing the company's competitive advantage. With less cash reserves, companies have less funds available to meet marketing challenges. Finally, buybacks almost always increase a company's leverage and financial risk. In fact, in recent years, companies have actually resorted to borrowing in order to finance stock buybacks, so great is their desire to manipulate stock prices upwards. How do buybacks distort profits? The primary purpose of stock buybacks is to manipulate stock prices upwards in order to give value to executive stock options. In other words, their purpose, although rarely admitted, is to remunerate employee managers. Most instances of executives being paid millions of dollars are the result of stock options given value by stock buybacks. However, due to a quirk in accounting standards, stock buybacks are not posted to the income accounts. Instead, the vast amounts spent on buybacks are posted directly to the capital accounts. 
the cost of stock buybacks is not reflected in price earnings ratios or in earnings per share. Often, profits may be overstated by 50% or more due to stock buybacks. And it's all perfectly legal. How are buybacks unfair? Buybacks represent shareholder money that is not distributed fairly to all shareholders. Furthermore, shareholders have no right to vote on buybacks, although, in effect, they are being defrauded. Common stock is supposed to represent a proportionate share of the assets of a company. Profits are supposed to be distributed proportionately to all shareholders in accordance with the number of shares they own. If buybacks were tendered fairly to all shareholders, they might be fair. But this is not the case. Buybacks, although announced in advance, are conducted in secret, and the details as to the price of the transactions, timing, or amounts, are unknown, except to company executives and their agents. Since company executives are selling their option stock into buybacks that they themselves control, the practice smacks of insider trading. What do others say about buybacks? Benjamin Graham, the author of the classic work, Security Analysis, and Warren Buffett's teacher, wrote that, There is no warrant, in logic, or in ethics, for applying caveat emptor to the acquisition of shares of stock from the company's own stockholders. Warren Buffett, the most famous investor of the 20th century, has criticized the practice of employee executives using stock buybacks to give value to their own stock options as contrary to the interests of shareholders. Professor William Lazonick of the University of Massachusetts Lowell has said that the massive use of stock buybacks has slowed American job creation and innovation. Considering that, over the last generation, net stock buybacks have exceeded new issues by trillions of dollars, representing the decapitalization of the American economy, there is little doubt that the practice is not beneficial to ordinary citizens. However, Despite the huge amounts involved, and the stunning economic significance, most investors are unaware of buybacks, and the negative effects they represent to their retirement plans. With over $5 trillion changing hands over the last generation, making some people very rich, stock buybacks obviously have their strong supporters and the supporters of stock buybacks are extremely skilled in promoting a practice and keeping the truth from the public. Employee executives have used stock buybacks together with stock options to become multimillionaires using money that otherwise would go to long-term investors as dividends. Stock brokers required by SEC rules to act as intermediaries in buyback transactions, have earned many millions on commissions due to the practice. Mutual fund managers, whose remuneration is tied to price appreciation of the portfolios they manage, are ardent supporters of stock buybacks, which drive prices ever higher. Dividends, on the other hand, cause prices to fall. Finally, Day traders and other market speculators like stock buybacks, as they do, all forms of market manipulation. As a practical example, let's examine the Boeing stock buyback of 1999 to 2001. The Boeing company is a prime example of an American industrial corporation. In 2003, it had 138,000 shareholders. It was the world's largest producer of commercial jets and satellites, and one of the largest manufacturers of military aircraft. It represented the best of American industry. Its board of directors 
included famous people from the apex of American society, CEOs of major corporations, and former high officials of the U.S. government and military. In mid-1998, Boeing directors announced that the company would repurchase 25% of the capital of the corporation, considering that only about one half of 1% of company capital was traded each day on the stock exchange, it was clear that a 25% buyback would necessarily drive stock prices upwards. The estimated cost of this buyback program was over $9 billion. The buyback program lasted until mid-2001. By the last quarter of 2000, Boeing stock prices had doubled. For the purpose of driving up stock prices, the program was a success. Executive stock options became more valuable. After the buyback program, regular market forces intervened, and, by the last quarter of 2002, prices had returned to the level of 1998, when the buyback program was first authorized. This graph shows that, the buyback program, having removed over $9 billion in cash from the corporate treasury, had considerably weakened the Boeing company. The ratio of long-term debt to capital increased from 33% in 1998 to 62% in 2002. The current ratio of short-term assets to short-term liabilities fell from a high of 1.8 in 1996 to a low of 0.8 in 2001. In other words, the buyback program increased financial leverage and produced negative net working capital. Both are signs of a weakened financial condition. Some apologists for stock buybacks argue that such programs increase the operational efficiency of a business in terms of return on equity or assets. This graph shows that, indeed, Boeing's return on assets and equity did improve during the buyback program. But, once the program ended, values returned to pre-buyback levels. Less than two years after the $9 billion program was completed, Boeing executives announced in the Wall Street Journal that the company was facing financial difficulties and hoped that the federal government could provide assistance. This final graph shows how regular, long-term shareholders of the Boeing company fared. During the five-year period, 1998 to 2002, Boeing distributed over $11.3 billion in the form of stock buybacks and dividends. However, only 20% of this amount was distributed proportionately and equitably to all shareholders as dividends. In three of the five years, stock buybacks, the red bars, exceeded corporate earnings, the green bars. This example is typical of buyback operations that have dominated the U.S. capital market for over a generation. Let's sum up. Stock buybacks are good for corporate executives. They are not so good for long-term shareholders. Stock buybacks are legal, but they are of questionable ethical validity. For more information on stock buybacks, please refer to Capital Flow Watch. The next video in this series shows how to use Google Finance to spot companies that engage in buyback practices.